Hello, welcome back. Today is uh, last day of June, June the 30th, 2022. And as you can see, the tiny houseboat still on the hard. And it'll probably stay there until mid August when Janet, my partner, will finish with her cataract surgery. So there was no sense going out because she can't bend down, she can't lift. You know, just don't want her eyes popping out again. But anyways, I thought I'd do this uh, video today, just going over what I call what a construction review, construction. You know, things I I would change if I was going to do it again. Things I think that worked really well. Things that perhaps didn't work so well. So let me start by talking about the hull. This was initially from a, as I said, from a what was it <clears throat> 1959 Popular Mechanics houseboat design for 24 foot plywood houseboat. And I followed the basic framing and so on for the hull, except I extended it to 30 feet. Um, for me that made more sense, I wanted to spend more time on it. 24 feet, take away the bow area and the stern area. You don't have much area inside to do anything much besides sleep and uh, use the washroom and cook or something. But uh, I mean it's fine if you want to go on the weekend, but if you want to stay longer, a couple of weeks on the water, you know, my most space is always a bit better. So anyway, uh, the hull, that worked out pretty well, except um, as you can see, I had difficulty in determining where I should put the water line. <clears throat> yes, there was no indication on the plans as to where the water line would be. So initially I thought, well, follow what Archimedes principle, uh, what uh, fresh water weighs about what, 60 some odd pounds uh, per cubic foot. The boat, uh, and uh, the boat, I think, based on how much plywood and wooden stuff I put into it, should be a, around 6,000 pounds. So that would give us uh, maybe displacing the 100 or so cubic feet. And the area in the water, the area in the water is uh, slightly less than 30 feet, so 30 times, so let's say 300, so 300 into, into uh, 100 divided by 300, or a third a foot, about four or five inches, maybe, maybe six inches. Well, I'll show you. This is the water line here. So, that's about five inches. I mean, I've got the skegs underneath, of course, I had another six inches, but I put the water line up here, and it was 18 inches. Well, okay, I can paint it down, go down. I only have to be above the water line, but about three or four inches, come for splash and so forth. But, I mean, the good part of it is that my through-hull fittings are all above the water line. So, I don't have to worry about any leakage on the through-hulls. Um, except for one thing, and I'll, I'll show you that. It was, there's only one through-hull I was going to use for intake, and that was to use the lake water for, for, the, for the galley, for, the, for washing and so on. And so, I had, you can see this is, where are we here? Quite a ways above the water line, so I had to put this little doodad on there to reach down below the water line. It works, it works, and uh, you see the water's running out here from the sink. So, I guess, okay, water line changing. The other thing which I would have done had I known, had perhaps thought about it ahead of time, would be to add some extra fiberglassing. Now, the hull I coated with epoxy, fiberglass with epoxy. Okay, and I, in retrospect, or would I do it again, I would add another layer, or maybe even two layers, of epoxy up to the waterline, or maybe slightly above the waterline, not all the way to the top. Uh, one of the considerations for me was the cost of the epoxy and the fiberglass. I mean, just doing uh, the epoxy and uh, fiberglass and so on. I mean, that was over a thousand bucks. You know, so it was not a, it was a significant portion of the cost of building the hull. Um, other than that, 
uh, no, it's, uh, I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it's fine. The sea trial was fine. It worked out. Uh, the trailer worked out well, too. Um, this is a trailer uh, taken from an RV. The frame from an RV, modified a bit to hold the houseboat. That's worked well. Uh, the houseboat goes off and on really easily. So no problem with that. So let me show you some stuff on top and inside. Right, one of the things that uh, we use on this boat are solar panels. Now these are flexible. Uh, each one is 100 watts. So I've got 600 watts of uh, energy coming out here when the sun is at noon. Um, the price on these was really quite good. Uh, these I got from through AliExpress, came from China, came very quickly with the shipping, with the controller, and the wiring and so on. It was about ended up being about 750 Canadian. So that I thought it was a pretty good deal, given that we started to look at some of the marine supply stores and so on. They're asking about $200 for for well, okay, so it's glass and glass and aluminum, but you don't really need that. All I needed to do was get it up a little bit off the deck because they do generate a lot of heat underneath when they're working. So you want to get some airflow underneath. But they've worked really well. Uh, the battery system I've got on here are four deep cell uh, heavy duty. They're, um, what, uh, 200, 205 ampere hours all to uh, 410 ampere hours of battery. It's worked out quite well, keeps the fridge going, all the other stuff, which is not much. Um, and all the other thing, uh, batteries, deep cycle batteries are expensive. These ones came from the States, from an outfit called Castle. And their price in the States is $107 for a battery, compared to over $200 for a Trojan. And I think they're just as good as the Trojans. So have a look for those. There was an outfit outside of London that was selling them for $100. 60 or 170 Canadian or something. The other thing, for the decking, I put down this peel and stick e EVA, I think. Again, came from through AliExpress and it's worked quite well. It stayed. It's been a couple of winters out here and it hasn't peeled off. It's, uh, I mean, I glassed underneath it, so it's it's worked well. It's, it's, it's soft, it's comfortable, and okay, it marks up a little bit, but you can clean it off. So it's not bad. So let's have a look inside. So a, a few additions and changes on the inside. One thing uh, we had these, uh, what are they called? There's a certain name for those chairs. They're very comfortable. Anyways, I took the legs off, put some plywood underneath, and bought some uh, telescoping pedestal from Canadian Tire, 100 bucks each and uh, had a little table, cut it down to size. The legs will move, the table can come out. Um, so, you know, a little bit sit down, eating area. And plus, of course, that area also can be used as an eating area. The other thing I've added, I've cut some more, cut some hatches into the floor. Basically for access, underneath you here I have wires and so on, and it's good to have access uh, underneath, the, underneath the area. Uh, okay, the other thing, oh, I, well, I think I've mentioned this before, but the fridge. Uh, I'm quite happy with the fridge uh, in that it was really, really an easy build in terms of taking existing styrofoam and using very thin uh, acrylic, plexiglass, to cover it, adhesive on there, and to make an inside very well insulated, keeps everything cold, and uh, I got a little isotherm um, compressor and system. That came from England. Uh, Canada, they're asking about 1300 bucks or so for the system. In England, an outfit called Supermarine Store in England, with the shipping, and the thing was 600 bucks. So, good saving. Also made a little shelf for, for uh, plates. Uh, Another access hole here, this because this is the water tank is underneath here, and the sump pump for the for the shower, and also a bilge pump is underneath there. I have another bilge pump in that corner. Access again to that. Um, 
nothing much changed in the head, except I did use it once, so it seemed to work. Uh, the propane heater uh, for the hot water heater seems to work. Uh, I'll show you I made some changes with the propane outside. Uh, other than that, another access back here. Uh, again, this is this I'm using for storage. I changed a little uh, little bench or whatever you call it here. Um, and what else? Oh yes, outside. Again, the, the EVA foam at the back. Outboard 30. Okay, I uh, initially I I have I wanted to run two hoses, so I had that a Y split Y splitter, but that requires two. Two uh, regulators, that was a bit too much. So I got this, this was on Amazon, not too expensive, only 25 bucks or so. So two hoses running off, uh, connections on the outside uh, to meet the safety requirements, and a gauge, which works quite well, show you how much, if there's any leakage, it'll go down, so it's quite good to have. Also bought a second tank, which I attached over there. Um, outboard engine, 30 horsepower. Uh, it, at full throttle, I think it'll drive the boat at about 10, maybe 10 miles an hour, 15k, but that's a full throttle. And given the price of gas, I mean, who needs that? Uh, the deck, it's been used a little bit, not too much. Gonna have to get a small dinghy, because uh, given on the lakes here, so forth, you really don't want to run up on the rocks unless you're driving a rental. So, anchor out a little bit, use a dinghy, get on shore, I think that'll work. So, that's that's about it. Um, and I guess the next next video that'll come when? Probably next video probably will what uh, mid-August and I hope next time we'll stay out a few weeks go around because it's a really nice area here. Nice lakes, nice water uh, and towards the end of August and then in September when all the school's back and all the most of the people are gone, it'll be really nice. Okay, uh, thanks for watching. If you like this video, you know, click like or share and tell other people about it. Uh, I've put them all together in a, in a series now, so there are, I think it's about 14 or 15 now. So you can watch it right from the beginning if you want to, actually I had one person binge watching. I don't know how he managed it, but he did. Anyway. See you next time.